If you've tuned into my stream, you already know that I typically like to go into raids with some pretty juicy gear. But like all Tarkov players, I've certainly had my fair share of financial hardships, and I've definitely had to make do with whatever I could find. Over time, I've learned that there are some decent kits you can put together that can at the very least save you from local scavs, but some can actually compete in some light PvP if you get forced into a fight. One of the most common questions I get during the stream is kit suggestions for new or lower level players or players that seem to be living near the Tarkov poverty line. With that in mind, I want to suggest the top kits you can run while on a budget. These kits need to be affordable, effective, and have high probability they won't get looted even if you die, so that when it comes back in insurance, you can reuse that gear for another attempt at getting some juicy loot. With that, let's get started on the top 5 budget kits you can run in Escape from Tarkov. Number 5. This kit is the bare minimum for players that have just started the game or are still low level and haven't got your traders leveled up yet. This kit is really only designed to save you from a few hits from most scavs, and it really is the bare minimum. But it's also the cheapest kit. For armor, we're going to be wearing the Paka vest, and unlike other kits, we're actually going to be going in without a helmet. Helmets typically offer very little protection, especially the lower tier ones, so to save money, we won't be wearing one for this kit. The rig will be a Spiritus Systems bank robber, and we'll also have a set of GSSH headphones. A balaclava will cover up our bright white face, and yes, this is actually a pretty important part of the kit. The gun we'll be taking in is the Keter, with a PSO GZH ammo. Its high fire rate mixed with relatively high flush damage bullets make a pretty decent SMG for hitting the legs of heavily armored enemies. Or you can just go for face taps for easy one shot kills. I'd recommend bringing three full 20 round magazines with you into the raid, with one or two stacks of ammo in your secure container. If your secure container is too small, this ammo is cheap enough to carry in your rig and not break the bank if you lose it. We need to carry out some decent loot, so bring with you the MBSS backpack. You can substitute this for the Burkut if you want to carry more loot, but if it's early in the wipe, you'll have a higher likelihood of the bag being looted if you die. This kit comes in at around 87,905 rubles for everything, and has a very high likelihood to come back in insurance if you die. On to number 4. We're going to be bumping the ruble allowance as well as our dealer levels for accessible gear for this one. This time we're going to make the jump to level 4 armor with the 6B3TM armor, also known as the burlap sack. There are cheaper kit choices, but level 4 armor will afford you additional protection from low level PMCs and potentially even raiders or scav boss guards, so I think it's worth it. Not only that, but this armor is almost never looted, and you can trade in a few busted sets of these for a brand new one from Ragman. Again, the helmet is optional, but we're going to go with the SSH-68 steel helmet. If you can, try the Ratnik helmet barter as a replacement, but the SSH will usually go unlooted unless someone truly desperate finds your corpse. By now, you've got Prapper leveled up to level 2 loyalty, so we're going to start using the AK-74 series of weapons. Which one you buy or barter for doesn't really matter. It can be the AK-74M, 74N, or any version that uses the 545 bullet. Initially, we'll be taking in PP ammo from the trader, but your main goal here is to gather up as much BT and BS ammo you can find in raid. If you have trouble finding it, take a break from your questing for a while and take a few trips to reserve. In just one day of raiding, you can fill up your secure container with this ammo, as it's quite literally lying around everywhere. You'll be using this ammo for a while, so stock up. We're also going to install a few basic mods to your AK to make it a little bit more controllable. Try the PSO series of scopes from Prapper if you're headed to woods or shoreline, as the long sight lines may need a magnified optic. For CQB maps, pick up a cheap Cobra sight if your AK has the integrated side mount. Both of these optics will hopefully not be looted due to their low price. While we're at it, we're going to get an AK-100 series handguard from Prapper, and now we can attach a grip and laser if we want. The RK-4 grip is a good choice along with the NC Star Tactical Blue Laser which will give you a recoil reduction as well as a hip fire bonus. Two optional upgrades is the DTK Muzzle Brake for a 10% less recoil and also the stock butt pad. All of these upgrades won't radically change the look of your AK and will hopefully go unlooted by high level players. But keep in mind, the more stuff you attach to your gun, the more likely it is that someone will take it with them if you die. Lastly, we're going to keep using the GSSH headphones from before, and we'll be upgrading the backpack to either the Scav backpack or Burkut. In total, this kit costs around 130 to 150k, with most items having a high chance of coming back in insurance. On to number 3. 
by this point you should hopefully have the flea market unlocked and your traders leveled up to around level 3 or so. This next kit is great to use the whole wipe, but it probably has the highest chance to be looted if you die, so prepare yourself for disappointing messages from Prapper. This time we'll be using the barter to get ourselves a TV-110 armored rig from Ragman for just a few bottles of bleach and shampoo. This is one of the best barters in the game, and one of the most well-rounded armored rigs in the game. It has high durability, excellent repairability, and it can hold a ton of stuff. But it's for that reason that you'll also find it missing in your insurance returns. For a helmet, we'll also be using the Ratnik, so keep pumping out bleach in the hideout to afford these barters. Feel free to substitute this with a U-lock or anything better you may have looted off someone else, or just don't wear a helmet entirely. We're going to keep farming BT and BS ammo from reserves and customs as much as possible, and keep using the AK-74 series rifles. Feel free to keep modifying your weapons to keep your ergo higher and your recoil lower, but try to keep them as basic looking as possible. And while cool handguards and stocks are aesthetically pleasing, keep in mind that a good muzzle brake typically offers way more recoil reduction and can keep your AK basic looking, increasing your chances of getting it back in insurance. Here's an example of a cheap, basic looking AK that actually has some great stats. At this point, if you want to keep using the GSSHs, feel free to, but if you want the audio to sound more clear, consider jumping up to the Comtac 2s, Razors, or Tactical Sport headsets. We're also going to try to get even more loot out of these raids, so we're switching to the Tri-Zip backpacks, but if you keep losing them in insurance or want to spend less, continue using the Burkut backpack. In all, this kit costs around 150 to 170k as long as you can barter for some of the items, especially the armor. But this kit has the highest chance of being looted, primarily due to the TV-110. We're almost to the end, we're on to number 2. This kit is a little different in that we're going to be using the philosophy of leg meta with our primary gun. If you didn't know, leg meta means that we're aiming for the unarmored legs of our enemies while using high flesh damaging bullets to avoid having to chew through their armor. You can also try shooting them in the unprotected face. This is a great way to take down some seriously huge chads while risking very little for yourself. There's several different kinds of guns you can use for this. Shotguns with magnum buck, MP5s or other 9mm SMGs and rip rounds, but my personal favorite budget gun is the Keter B with SP7 rounds. This gun will almost never get looted due to its low cost, and the SP7 rounds can take down PMCs and Raiders pretty fast with its high fire rate. This kit is actually how I made it to over 100 million rubles in my first wipe. The rest of this kit is a mixed bag of previous kits, so feel free to use any armor you wish. Paka, burlap bag, TV 110, it's completely up to you. Just throw on whatever you can afford. If you wanted the ultimate insurance return kit, I'd probably use the Keter B, SP7 rounds and 30 round mags, burlap bag armor, and a decent sized backpack like a Burkut. A kit like this will only cost you around 100 to 150k tops, and like I said, you'll definitely be getting it back so you can get multiple uses from this one purchase. And number one. This is what I like to call Chad Light or Diet Chad. It's the most expensive kit, but it offers the best protection and it will allow you to compete in some fairly high level PvP and actually stand a chance. For armor, we're going with the level 5 Corund from Prapper. I know, I know, I talk a lot of smack about the Corund, but it can take at least a couple hits from some fairly big bullets before it completely falling apart. And that's another reason Corund makes it into the budget list. It zeroes out very quickly and most PMCs will consider it not worth it to loot, which means you'll be getting it back in insurance. It repairs very well, so you could definitely get several uses from a single purchase. For a helmet, we'll be wearing the Highcom Striker. At level 4 armor and high ricochet chance, these helmets might actually bounce around every once in a while, and since they're 20k cheaper than a U-lock and typically go unlooted, it's a pretty safe bet. Like always, you can always ditch the helmet to save money or substitute it for something else. At this point, your gun selection is completely up to you. You may still be using the AKs, or maybe you can try out some SMGs. A good suggestion is the MP7 while using the FMJ SX rounds. These rounds perform extremely well against armor, and they aren't as expensive or rare as the APSX. The gun is also very cheap to outfit, and there's a few good barters for the MP7. If you want to get multiple uses out of this kit, consider running the MP153 shotgun with Magnum Buck or AP20. These shotguns almost always go unlooted due to their size and cost. Depending on the gun you use, this kit will range from 175 to 250k, so while it's expensive, you can compete with some high level PvP, which could get you a couple high end kits and good loot from your fallen enemies. 
Those are the top five budget kits according to me. That being said, there's a ton of different gear combinations to choose from, so let me know in the comments what your favorite kit to run is when you're on a budget. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on our latest releases of guides, Tarkov lore, stream highlights, and more. Speaking of stream, I play Tarkov live on Twitch five days per week. We're always having a blast over there and we'd love to have you stop in and say hi. I want to thank everyone who supported our content lately. It's been amazing to see our community grow. We'll have a new video for you guys soon, but until then, I'm Jeff with EUL Gaming. Good luck out there.